Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. If your number one priority is family fun on the water without breaking the bank, we'll be taking a look at the Carolina Skiff 218 DLV, a bay boat with an overall length of 20 feet 10 inches, a beam of 8 feet, and max horsepower rating of 150. Standout features on the Carolina Skiff 218 DLV. Having a large carrying capacity means you don't have to leave anyone back at the dock, with room for everyone to comfortably hang out on board. Ample storage space below deck means you don't have to leave anything back at the dock, with plenty of room for all types of gear. A functional console design places all the necessary switches and controls within quick reach of the helmsman and leaves plenty of space for passengers. If having to choose between heading offshore for Dolphin or inshore for Snook is too much to handle, we'll be looking at the Blue Wave 2800 Pure Hybrid, a bay boat with an overall length of 27 feet 10 inches, a beam of 9 feet 2 inches, and max horsepower rating of 557. Standout features on the Blue Wave 2800 Pure Hybrid. A versatile hull design blends the offshore performance characteristics of a large center console with the shallow water capability of a smaller bay boat. Elevated casting platforms give anglers an excellent place to sight fish from and whip long cast while providing an abundance of storage underneath. A functional helm layout ensures the captain is comfortable even in the harshest of conditions while also providing storage options for important items. For the ultimate in form and function, especially in blue water, we'll be taking a look at the WorldCat 280cc-X, a center console with an overall length of 27 feet 6 inches, a beam of 9 feet 2 inches, and max horsepower rating of 400. Standout features of the WorldCat 280cc-X. Comfortable bow seating is a necessity when bringing along multiple guests and should include amenities such as back cushions and cup holders. The additional storage created underneath provides an excellent place for all of their belongings. Easy console access with a built-in head gives passengers ample room to use the restroom if needed and also provides extra storage space. A swim platform or dive ladder at the stern of the boat allows for an easy transition in and out of the water, while the design of a catamaran is perfect for adding overbuilt ladders with handrails for safety. Join our hosts George Labonte and Rick Riles as they conduct walkthroughs and review key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to another edition of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. I'm Captain Rick Riles. And I'm George Labonte, boating editor of Florida Sportsman Magazine. Rick, we're going to start out looking at the Carolina Skiff 218 DLV. Next, we're going to move into the Blue Wave 2800 Pure Hybrid, and finally, the WorldCat 280CCX. George, our job is to help get people out on the water and do it best for them. Imagine this, the Carolina Skiff's a 21-foot boat rated for 14 people. Yeah, that boat is a tank, and let me tell you something, that is not your granddaddy's Carolina Skiff. This takes that utility-style skiff to the next level, finished a lot more nicely than a lot of people are going to really, you're going to be surprised when you see how nice this boat looks on the water. Have you ever seen a boat do more with its horsepower than that 28 Blue Wave does. What a rocket ship. Absolutely, Rick. You know, Blue Wave owners asked for a bigger boat. This is a new offering from Blue Wave. They delivered, it's a 28 footer. This is the biggest bay hybrid we tested this year. Very exciting boat. And finally, that WorldCat 28, I mean, they've really stepped up their game with this boat. Well, I've seen it, George, and it's pretty. And that says a lot, because one thing that people haven't liked about cats in the past, they ain't been pretty. This one's pretty, the guys are gonna to wanna to see it. Rick, they did a great job with this boat. You know, they took the style. I mean, that boat's got style like an old 57 Chevy now. It's really cool looking, but don't forget, it's still got all the great features you expect on a WorldCat and the ride of a big catamaran boat. Really neat boat to look at. I can't wait to ride on it, George. The ride's distinctive and it's almost always great. Let's get started. Absolutely. When we come back, host George Labonte and Rick Riles take a closer look at a boat made to bring all of your family and friends out on the water, the Carolina Skiff 218 DLV. This segment brought to you by Evan Rood, the outboards that are changing everything. The future of boating is here. Now get all the efficient performance of an Evan Rood E-Tech G2 in the new 150, 175, and 200 horsepower. Fuel economy is everything. I was really shocked how fuel efficient it is. Anywhere from 40 to 50 miles further on a tank of fuel. All day on the water. I told my wife, I said, you know, I can't think of the last time I filled up. It's more money in the bank for me. 
The best-in-class fuel economy of the Evan Rudy Tech G2 is now available from 150 to 300 horsepower. To learn more, visit evanrude.com. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our host George Labonte and Rick Riles as they take a closer look at the Carolina Skiff 218 DLV. Representing the 17 to 24 foot class in the bay boat category, the Carolina Skiff 218 DLV has an overall length of 20 feet 10 inches, a beam of 8 feet, and a max horsepower rating of 150. Built for inshore and nearshore versatility, she has a draft of 6 inches, a dry weight of 1,773 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 30 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. Rick, we're on the 218 DLV Carolina Skiff today. Carolina Skiffs come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. This one is a beast. I, it is, and just like all Carolina Skiffs, it's built to do a lot of different things. This one has so many of the attributes of a traditional skiff. You know, Rick, when you see a boat like this, I mean, this thing is like an ark. I mean, I can picture two of everything on this boat, but most people think of a skiff like this, they think of hard riding sleds. This boat's a little different. It is a little different. They've got what they call the modified tri-V on this hull. And what that does is it enables you to have all this room up here and all this beam, and yet she's got a little V-hole to her to improve the ride and the chop. You know, this boat is definitely going to take some of the sting out of having such a big, wide, stable platform. It'll carry a bunch of people and a bunch of weight. I mean, you got to look around at this boat to appreciate how much room there is. Let's have a look at it. George, let's start right up here in the bow. And let me tell you something. The use of space in this bow area is one of the things that first made Carolina Skiff famous. Absolutely. Look at the gunnel height here, and then look at how much space equal to that you've got for storage underneath when you make this a raised casting deck. Well, like you said, we can haul two of everything. We got plenty of room for a lot of it you up here. You can hide some stuff in there, no doubt about it. Both sides open up. You've got access to the entire casting deck underneath it. Tons of storage space. The boat's pre-wired for a trolling motor. Actually, you know, picture this as a lake boat, too. Got a trolling motor up there. You've got a receiver here, the swivel ease receiver for your pedestal swivel seat. You're styling up on the bow. Let's move back here and take a look at the size of the cockpit on this in the center of the boat. Well, you can tell that's why it's certified for 14 people. I can't get over it. But you know, when you get to a console, George, I'm a real minimalist, okay? I want everything I need and nothing I don't. And Carolina Skiff's kind of famous for that. Yeah, you know what? I know what you love about a switch panel, and when you put a bunch of people on the boat, like you're definitely gonna do with this boat, where do you want your switches located? Well, you sure don't want them here where people can bounce into them. You want them up where the captain has access to them and nobody else. This looks like a really trim kind of Spartan console, but there's a lot more going on here than meets the eye. Take a look at this. You got tilt steering right here, switches where you want them. You've got six rod holders on the side of it, a live well in the front right here, and your favorite. Oh, removable windshield. <laughs> Four eye trailer, it's coming off, it's going down in the console where there's no love bugs on it. This console is not big on glitz and glamour. It's good on stuff that work every day. Solid features. It's trim profiled, but there's enough room right here to put your multifunction display on there for your electronics, and it opens up a lot of space. Not like this boat needs extra space, but you got plenty to walk around in here. That's how you fit 14 people on a boat like this. George, I love rocket launchers. I particularly love them when you can actually put the rods behind them and you got plenty of room for it. This one is not fancy. Once again, it's very functional. A cooler fits underneath it to keep your drinks cold, but there's nothing on it to go wrong. I mean, what more do you need on a boat like this? It's perfect. And it adds to the room because there's nothing sticking out the sides. This raised deck opens up a lot of possibilities too. We're using the space really smartly here. You've got a couple of flip up seats, convertible. You know, you can get comfortable when you're riding around, flip that down and it goes back to being a casting deck. They put a live well in the center of the boat. You've got two hatches back here that have access to your systems, your batteries, steering, etc., and room for storage as well. This is a really good workspace back here, been using every bit of it. Yeah, they did. They even used beyond the transom. They've got a great swim ladder for your grandkids getting in and out of the boat. If you're the guy that's going to get enlisted to carry a bunch of extra gear and coolers and people out to the sandbar on the weekend, or if you just want to grab a buddy and go fishing for the day, Carolina Skiff 218 DLV is definitely worth a look. When we return, host George Labonte and Rick Ryle step aboard a boat built to hang with the offshore fleet and easily navigate inshore waters, the Blue Wave 2800 Pure Hybrid. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. At Yamaha, reliability is a family tradition. Meet the next generation. 
four new advanced technology inspired inline four cylinder performers. Bred from the reliability and boater satisfaction that is part of Yamaha's DNA, they prove that when power gets lighter, faster, stronger, and smarter, boating gets even better and more satisfying for boaters like you. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our host Rick Riles as he meets with Clint Saunders from Suzuki Marine to discuss options for repowering your boat in this week's power segment. I'm here with Clint Saunders from Suzuki. Clint, I'm like a lot of guys. I love my boat, but she's getting a little tired. What does Suzuki have for me? Why would I go Suzuki? Well, if you're looking at repowering an older boat, what you're gonna replace is most likely either two-stroke technology or a real early four-stroke engine. By going to a new Suzuki, like our 350 flagship motor we just introduced, or even anything in our line, you're gonna have an engine that's much more fuel efficient, you're gonna have an engine with a very long warranty, and you're gonna have something that gets so much better gas mileage that you're gonna save a lot of money over the long run, which will basically pay for those new engines over time. And some of the other things to consider from when four strokes came out to now, you have the lean burn technology with a Suzuki, variable valve timing, which helps with whole shot and low end torque, and then as well as fly-by-wire. So if you're tired of how stiff your controls got over the years, go with fly-by-wire, and that's the most smooth operation for shift and throttle you can ever choose. You can make an old boat feel brand new by putting new power on it. Now, let's check out the Blue Wave 2800 Pure Hybrid. Representing the 25 to 28 foot class in the bay boat category, the Blue Wave 2800 Pure Hybrid has an overall length of 27 feet 10 inches, a beam of 9 feet 2 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 557. Designed to handle offshore chop comfortably and easily drift a mangrove shoreline, she has a draft of 16 inches, a dead rise of 18 degrees, a dry weight of 3,650 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 94 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. Rick, we're standing on the brand new number one hull, Blue Wave 2800 Pure Hybrid. What do you think? This is the biggest boat I've ever seen with a casting platform on it. Oh, you get so much more visibility from up here than you do from standing down on the deck of a boat. This is a true 28-foot boat. There's no replacement for displacement, right? Yeah. So you've got the size going for you, but you've got the features of a bay boat. You've got a two-step hull. This really does speak more than one boat at a time. Well, this boat's got a lot of great fishing features on it. Let's take a look at a few of them. You've got everything you need right up here. I mean, you're self-contained. There's a live well here, which is a pitch well. You've got a huge fish box in the deck right there, 200 quarts. This is insulated, there's a drink box. This is insulated, another big drink box or storage or fish box. Additionally, matching rod lockers, you can put 10 rods in there, lock them away. All that space fit into here, and this is a big casting deck. That well is pressurized. That's really important for a bow pitch well because when you're running, that takes most of the shock. Absolutely. But they got that addressed. When they address stuff like that, it speaks to the fact that they know what they're doing. Yeah, and this is a very fish-friendly four deck right here. You've got room for a couple of guys to walk around. You're gonna do a lot of sight fishing inshore, on the beach, even offshore. It's very easy to walk around up here. I mean, this is a good space. Fly fishing, for example. It's a good space to do that right here on this raised deck. You're right, but one of the things that makes this boat a hybrid is the fact that us old guys can still be up here down deep in the boat where we feel a little more secure when it's rough offshore. So you've really got the best of both worlds. You've greatly increased your storage and you can still be down inside the boat and fish up here. They did a good job. George, before we get back here too far, why go from a 26 up to a 28? So much more room in the console. They've got a head in this and they've got the room to use it. You're right, Rick. Another benefit of having the big console, you've got tons of room here for your displays. I mean, this creates a really big face. I like how everything here is heads up. All your switching's right there, two display units. And you know another thing, it makes it easier to hide behind this. You're gonna take this boat offshore some days, and when you do, I mean, you can get behind it, but it doesn't impede your visibility at all. It's nice and open. And take a look at this hard top right here. Oh, you're not kidding. Three separate boxers. Let me tell you something, George, they've even got a phone holder back there with a Bluetooth hook up to it, you play your music from back there. You've got lighting, speaker boxes built in. I mean, you can do a lot with this space. They've definitely maximized the use of space right here with this top. 
These seats right here are really custom. The LeBrock seats, they're super comfortable. It's like a sports car, convertible, you know, to lean up against if you're standing or to sit in. You've got storage drawers in the back and storage trays on this side here. You can also add a 40 gallon live on there. It comes in a couple different ways. Depends on how you like to fish, have it your way. I like it set up the way it is. These LeBrock seats are fantastic. But let's step on to the back because when you put on that rear casting platform, you add a lot of features. George, remind me about everything you gain when you put this platform back here. Well, look at it. I mean, you've got this deck space. I mean, again, a great place to fish from, but you know how much I like to lie bait. You got a 27 gallon live well right there, 27 gallon live well right here. A lot of offshore boats only have that much live well, big 35, 40 foot offshore boats. You've got storage in addition to that right here. Lift this seat up, you got a nice bench seat, tons of storage there, huge bilge access, all your systems are easily accessible underneath a really big casting platform. This is a well-engineered boat rig. This is a double-stepped hull. It's got a carbon Kevlar keel, which is really gonna come in handy. I mean, you're gonna take this boat into some shallow water and the backwater fishing on it. You're gonna come in contact with the bottom. That's a great feature to have on there. It's really neat. So when you're looking, it's something that's very economical to run. Single engine, three miles to the gallon, okay, can go plenty offshore. 28 feet, plenty of fuel, but can still draft shallow. The Blue Wave 2800 Pure Hybrid is the flagship of the Blue Wave fleet and well worth checking out. When we come back, host George Labonte and Rick Riles check out a boat designed to perform a variety of tasks in style and comfort, the WorldCat 280cc X. This segment brought to you by Suzuki Marine, the ultimate four-stroke outboard. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts, Rick Riles and George Labonte, as they check out the WorldCat 280cc X. Representing the 27 to 30 foot class in the center console category, the WorldCat 280cc X has an overall length of 27 feet 6 inches, a beam of 9 feet 2 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 400. Built to conquer rough water with ease, she has a draft of 14 inches a dry weight of 7,300 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 220 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. Rick, we're on the WorldCat 280ccx here today. This boat right here, you know, it's got something going on that I noticed right off the bat when I walked down the dock and looked at it for the first time. They've changed the paint scheme on the boat and molded in this break in the shear line to give it a more traditional monohull look and you know, a little bit more styling. If you look at the boat from the top, it's got a lot of curves to it. It's not a square box like most people think of with a cat boat. You've got a little bit of tumble home back there. I mean, really, really, the boat is a curvy boat. This boat is prettier than absolutely, like you say, its predecessors, but man, does it have a lot more going for it than just looks. This boat is a great head sea boat. I mean, that's why they originally started building these boats is for the ride. Look at the way the boat looks from the front. You see all that water is going under your feet through the middle of the boat. There's very little hull surface actually pushing through the water. It's an entirely different animal than a monohull boat. George, you still haven't explained to me why does this boat look so much bigger than 28 feet to me? Well, it's a good question, Rick. I mean, look at the footprint of this boat. I mean, you've got two smaller hulls with this big deck space. This is just a wider boat than your typical 28-foot boat. Having that additional beam, it just gives you so much more room to put stuff into the boat. In fact, there's so much going on in here. Let's take a look at some of these features up in the bow. Here's one of the benefits of a boat this size. Look at how much room there is right in this seating area, okay? I mean, if you've got a bunch of people that you need to take out on the boat, I mean, there's room for a bunch. I mean, you can seat eight or nine people right here very comfortably. There's a lot of other little creature comforts too. I mean, all around you, you've got you know, your standard, you've got cup holders and charging ports and some speakers. You're listening to tunes, riding around on the ditch. I mean, this is like a living room in the boat right here. And it's not just people room, it's space for gear too. You're gonna have to have a place to put all that gear if you're diving, for example, or fishing tackle or clothing, towels, whatever. All that stuff fits underneath here. We're using this space. 
George, you know how much I love a forward opening console. Big door, plenty of access, all kind of storage access ahead if you need it. It just makes it easier to work with. Yeah, you know, the head's a great feature to have for the family boat, like we said. You know, this is nicely finished inside too, but most importantly, like you said, it is super easy to get in and out of the thing through the front. Rick, there's a bunch of features that stand out on this boat. One of the things I really want to point out to you is the counter shading underneath here. This dark top on the underside, blacked out dash, blacked out panel for the electronics, really swallows up all the glare on this boat. I mean, for driving around on a hot sunny day in Florida, you know, that glare will fatigue your eyes. I mean, it really takes a lot out of you and it really, really takes it away on this boat. This upholstery, the seating is very comfortable. Everything about this says, utility but there's some luxury involved it's not it's not a four-wheel drive pickup truck it's an suv and this boat has the fit and finish to fit into the luxury class this helm station has got a lot of cool features you know starting with right in front of us here your switches your battery switches and breakers are right there you've got a 30 gallon live well in the helm station right here i mean that's plenty of live bay capacity for an offshore boat absolutely oh george but come over to this side this door opens you've got plano trays here knife holder, pliers holders, everything you could want to get your lines in the water in no time. It's set up very well for it. In the deck underneath my feet, there's two 355 quart boxes that pump out overboard. They're insulated, but they also have spaces for four offshore rods will fit inside there. You can stow rods or store them when you're not using them or use that for a fish box. Two of them, that's two huge fish boxes in the deck. George, back here is where it really gets good. In case bench seating for 10 is not enough, here's two or three more that you can put back here. And I know you love what you're looking at. Yeah, this is the on-ramp system they've got to board the boat for divers. It's just, it doesn't get any better. Actually, this is basically stairs into the back of the boat. How much easier do you want it? George, until they invent an elevator that brings you up from the bottom and drops you in the boat, this has got to be the easiest way to get in and out. I'm going to tell you, if you've got a big group of people, whether it's your family or a bunch of buddies, you've got to look at this WorldCat 280ccx. It's a home run in the 28-foot category. Hey, if you'd like any more information about the boats you've seen this week or any boat you see on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, visit floridasportsman.com. Or we'll see you on next week's edition of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew docked and dined at Pirate's Cove Marina in Stewart, Florida. Family owned and operated, featuring 50 renovated rooms with an outstanding restaurant and a full service 50 slip marina.